You know, wrestling fans, we live in a day and age where all over, everywhere we turn on TV when it comes to wrestling, we hear the greatest of all time, first time ever, biggest is the greatest. The longer, the better. Everything's turning out to be six, seven hours long. And then they advertise it as it's going to be the greatest WrestleMania of all time. The greatest SummerSlam of all time. We saw a SummerSlam a few years ago where they advertised the match, uh, a matchup. Too big for WrestleMania in Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Everywhere we turn, we see uh, 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 WWE showing us that type of verbiage that everything is just so great. In this edition, we are going to dive in and discuss what is the greatest money in the bank of all time. I have went back and watched some money in the bank ladder matches and money in the bank pay-per-views and came up with, in my estimation, what is the greatest of all time. Sure, We've had some great money in the bank moments, Edge cashing in and becoming WWE champion, him cashing in and becoming world heavyweight champion. We've had the first ever women's money in the bank and men's money in the bank at the same time, on the same pay-per-view, we've had CM Punk have his two-time Money in the Bank winner, all that, plus so much more on Money in the Bank. But what is the greatest of all time? All you really have to do is look at the 2011 Money in the Bank. Now, of course, some of you might say, well, Webby, you're really just saying that because of the CM Punk versus John Cena matchup for the WWE Championship. I am here to tell you first off that that is not the complete case. It is not. All you have to do is look at the entire card and see how it grew superstars, how it elevated rivalries, how it continued the build of the Yes Movement and Daniel Bryan, the growth and the absolute strength of the Hall of Pain, Christian winning the World Heavyweight Championship. All of that plus so much more happened on the 2011 WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view. First off, let's look at the SmackDown Live Money in the Bank matchup. Wade Barrett, Justin Gabriel, Sin Cara, Sheamus, Cody Rhodes, Heath Slater, Daniel Bryan, and Kane was in this match. Now, of course, as we all know, this was Daniel Bryan's crowning achievement in 2011 before he got the World Heavyweight Championship away from the Big Show and Mark Henry later on in that year. This was a huge crowning achievement for him. Everybody else, a great showcase. 
Sheamus was on the up and rising as well. Cody Rhodes was a star that uh, really put on a good outing. Someone that we really wanted to see money in the bank winner. Never really got that opportunity, but whatever the case, someone that uh, uh, that I will say in this contest really put on some really good spots and uh, uh, got taken out and sold a power bomb by Sheamus very very well was Sin Cara, and quite frankly, that's why he was put in this to have some good spots and then sell a massive power bomb through the ladder kind of in the middle of this contest and got carried out on a stretcher. But whatever the case, Daniel Bryan's crowning achievement. One reason why I say this pay-per-view, this money in the bank is the greatest of all time. Kelly Kelly versus Brie Bella, Divas Championship. Can't really say that much about this pay-per-view with this title. I mean, you really can't because uh, match really wasn't that long. It didn't really showcase a whole lot uh, as far as wrestling-wise is uh, concerned. It was just there to uh, have a women's matchup on the card. Big Show versus Mark Henry. Some of you I know are saying <sighs> putting the big show on what you would consider a spot, the greatest uh, uh, money in the bank of all time is cringeworthy. I know you're thinking that by what I thought was my estimation, but Mark Henry taking the big show out for quite some time definitely did its job crushing his ankle. Mark Henry on the build, on the rise in the WWE after so many years, definitely did its job at Money in the Bank, where he moved on later on in the year to capture the World Heavyweight Championship from Randy Orton. Absolutely fantastic at Night of Champions. Whatever the case, this was a good moment for Mark Henry to beat the Big Show and then take the Big Show out for quite some time. Now, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match from Raw. Kofi Kingston, Alberto Del Rio, Jack Swagger, The Miz, Alex Riley, Evan Bourne, R-Truth, and Ray Mysterio. In my estimation, there was really only one clear winner in this matchup. Alberto Del Rio was the really one clear winner in this match. He was on the up and rising. He was already uh, uh, main eventing WrestleMania with Edge that year, amongst other things. So no question he was our truth in there in my estimation, simply because he main invented the pay-per-view before that capital punishment with John Cena. Evan Bourne and Kofi Kingston would do a lot of fancy good stuff off ladders. The Miz and Alex Riley, hey, look, you need some big names in there, and The Miz is going to do that. Alex Riley associated with The Miz. And, of course, Rey Mysterio, of course he's going to do some great stuff. Whatever the case, Alberto Del Rio, definitely the one to win this. And one of the reasons why I say this really helps out make this the greatest of all time in a small portion is because Alberto Del Rio winning this, he cashes it in becomes the WWE champion, and it leads to an absolute fantastic matchup at Survivor Series against CM Punk, in which CM Punk has his historic 434-day title reign. 
and that was a great matchup. Plus, both of them had their own ring announcers. But do you see how this was the start of it? This pay-per-view was the start of a lot of things. Christian versus Randy Orton. Good matchup outside of the ending. However, I am going to uh, criticize and cringe all over the rivalry of these two. I, I, I just am. Looking back now and watching uh, uh, these uh, this rivalry between Christian and Randy Orton, it is kind of cringeworthy. You want to know the truth. Quite frankly, Randy Orton should have a lost, in my estimation, clean in this matchup. Two reasons why he did not. First off, WWE needed some way to continue this storyline to SummerSlam. This is my estimation. And second, they did disqualification so they could protect Randy Orton and him still drop the World Heavyweight Championship. That's it. But in my estimation, Christian still could have got the title and beat Randy Orton. Wouldn't have hurt Randy Orton one bit. Not a bit. But the whole story of Christian having lawyers and getting, if he, if, Randy Orton gets disqualified, then uh, he loses the title and numerous upon numerous matches because Christian's being a big baby and, and just wanting matches constantly. Just annoyance in, in my estimation. But as far as match quality, absolutely fantastic between these two. And of course... The reason why everybody really went to the arena in Chicago that night. The reason why most of you will say, I say, this is the greatest of all time. And that is CM Punk versus John Cena. Storyline or not, they try to, at the end, revisit the Montreal Screwjob, in which Vince McMahon sent John Laurinaitis down there to uh, ring the bell. Didn't happen. John Cena punched John Laurinaitis. Ended up getting the go to sleep. He went to sleep for a one, two, three. And CM Punk walked out WWE champion, which led to champion versus champion at SummerSlam. As we all know, that year, but it was a f fantastic, almost 40-minute matchup. Couldn't ask for a better match. Whatever the case, the build to the match, great. Pipe bombs all over the place. And Vince trying to sign CM Punk again to a huge deal on TV. CM Punk ripping the contract, us not really knowing if he's going to sign again and everything throughout that entire build to Money in the Bank really made for some good entertaining television. But in my estimation, this was and will always will be until WWE does something real spectacular, the greatest Money in the Bank of all time. You've had some great ones. You've had some good ones. Edge and everything he did with his. Kane and what he did with his. The rivalry with The Undertaker. Uh, being uh, uh, all those uh, big, huge victories over him. Finally. Or you have the... Uh, Women's Money in the Bank, where we have the first ever, all that, plus the rivalries that I'm talking about now, 
is why I'm saying this is the greatest of all time. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter at 2007Webby. Let me know what you think is the greatest of all time. Go back and watch what's hot in the world of professional wrestling where I discuss Fox wanting to put another show on Fox Sports 1 where I discuss Daniel Bryan's contract with the WWE as of right now. September 1st, he's gone. I discuss everything plus so much more on the second episode of what's hot in the world of professional wrestling. Raw and SmackDown live reviews of this week is also up on the channel right now. And until I see you tomorrow night for Monday Night Raw, where hopefully we finally have a decent build to money in the bank for this year. This is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.